Hey guys, this is John, and welcome to another Climbing the Rating Ladder video. I'm playing a uh, player rated 1424. This is a 15 plus 10 game. I have the black pieces. I think I've had white in my last few Climbing the Rating Ladder games. So uh, let's play a Sicilian here. And I'm going to go for a Hyper Accelerated Dragon. We'll play G6. I think this is a pretty decent Sicilian line. Uh, white plays C3, so it does not go for D4. Does not go for the main line. And I can play the bishop g7 move, and after d4, take, take. It's just very important that black challenge the center. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm expecting white to advance in the middle. That's usually the purpose of c3. White does play that. Okay, let's capture. Yeah, and very important that we strike back in the middle of the board. I do not want white sticking around with these pawns. And this is all theoretical stuff so far. Seems like white is familiar with this. They play e5. I'm going to bring my knight out. Look for this bishop to come to g4. Oftentimes the knight comes to h6. Yeah, I think white really understands what this system is about from their perspective. So I am looking forward to this game. We'll play knight h6. Get ready to castle. Hope you're all doing well. My voice has been a little bit shaky recently, so... If I happen to, to talk a little quieter than usual, that's probably the reason why. But uh, I would imagine I sound largely the same. I don't feel sick or anything. So that's good. Okay, bishop d3. I'm wondering if I can play knight f5 and go after this pawn right away. Because that is pretty appealing. I think I may do that. I could also castle here and just develop. But knight f5 attacking this pawn at a moment when it looks a little awkward for white to defend it. I like the look of that, so I'm going to play it, and let's see how one camel reacts. They could certainly take the knight, as they do, but I'm happy to play this position. I have the two bishops. I get to develop my light square bishop in one fell swoop. I didn't experience any congestion with having the bishop and the knight like competing for squares on that diagonal. So I would consider this so far to be a nice, a nice position for me. Nothing uh, absolutely special going on here, but a nice position. Okay, bishop d2. I wonder why white's playing that. Are they worried about queen a5? I have a hard time understanding that move. I can go queen b6 maybe if I want to attack this pawn and this pawn. I could simply castle. This move looks interesting too, looking to take and then take d4. I'm definitely considering that as well. Castling, probably the most routine move here. This bishop is blocked on the diagonal, but I can I can think about playing f6 in the future if I want to try to open that diagonal up. So those are all moves that are coming to mind. These three candidate moves, I'd say. I wonder if I play queen b6 if white's going to go bishop c3. They might play knight c3 and tempt me to take one of these pawns, but... I would imagine queen b6, bishop c3 is going to be the answer. And in that case, I can play queen a6 maybe. So yeah, let's, let's play the queen out here. I'm curious how white's going to react. Looks like a decent move. Yeah, bishop c3. Okay, so the pawn, um, or the, the bishop rather, acts like a big pawn. Typically, you don't want your bishop wedged in between a, a pair of pawns like that. And since I'm pretty confident white's going to try to castle when they get the chance, let's throw this move in to make life, life difficult for them. Because you cannot castle through check. You can't castle into, out of, or through check. So that's what we're playing off of here. And if queen e2, I have bishop d3. All right, so knight bd2. And here I will probably castle short. And then maybe look to open the center with this f6 move, assuming white's king remains in the middle. Also thinking about bishop d3 right, right away, but I don't see the rush on that move. So yeah, let's, let's castle. And basically ask white how they're going to extricate themselves from this situation. They have all their minor pieces in the game, but their king is the big question mark here. Looks annoying. Okay, and there comes queen e2. So now I'm thanking myself for having held off on 
playing bishop d3 because I get to do it with tempo. And I'm going to play it just thinking about what my follow-up might be. But given how apparent it is that this move is good for me, let's play it. I could trade queens too, but I might only be slightly, slightly better in that position, if at all. I'd have the bishop pair if we traded there, but white would get to connect their rooks. The king might not be so poorly placed in the middle, so this looks much, much better. Hmm. So queen e3, I could continue with this f6 move if I want. I could also try to play off of white maybe wanting to castle queenside, but white actually goes right back to d1. Mm hmm. Okay, so here the f6 move again starts to look really good. The only misgiving I kind of have is that queen b3 could threaten to take d5, but you know what? My position is so well developed, I might even be willing to allow that because the position is opening up nicely for me. I even always have e6 if I need to f6, queen b3, e6. So why am I thinking about opening up the position? It's a simple matter of king safety here. My king is extremely safe. Castle on the king side, no issues whatsoever. White's king is stranded in the middle. And that should be our cue to try to open the position if we can, uh, and especially open the middle of the board. Just seeing if there's anything else that might catch my eye. I mean, b5, b4, I could try to advance against this bishop that looks like kind of a superficial plan, though. White can easily stop it with a move like a3. So let's play the f-pawn forward. Let's go for it. And if white takes, I may take with the pawn. I think I will take with the pawn and then try to get one of the rooks to e8. Because this column, if I can deliver a check there, it's deadly. The bishop can always come out here too, if needed. I have that avenue to try to increase the pressure. So looking tough for white. Yeah, knight b3. Okay. I can't remember if I mentioned this move. I was going to play this against that. I do see now this knight could pivot back here. So maybe that's a potential plan for white. Will be interesting to see. But yeah, I do think I need to take a timeout and play the b6 move. Let's do it. It's a typical way to try to restrict a knight as well, just prevent its forward movement from the b3 or b6 or g3, g6 squares, all these. You can push your knight pawn in reply. Now let's see if white plays knight c1. That's about the only reasonable move I see here. There's no real way to disrupt this. Yep, okay. So to white's credit, they do find that move. Now, if I try to keep the bishop on this diagonal, I'm probably going to be hit by these pawns. So I think it's time to pull this back. Attack the, the knight, and I'm still preventing castling. White can go queen e2, but if there's a big trade down, I should win a pawn in that sequence. So I think I'm liking that. I could maybe consider taking, and in the event of a, a swap down, play e4 at the end, but I like keeping the tension more. That looks much more natural. So let's do it. Bishop e4. Now, this is another opponent who's playing very fast. And I can never be sure if the dynamics of the rating, if my opponent, you know, is not playing on Zen mode or something and knows that they're playing an IM, if that plays into it, maybe they think, oh, I'm going to lose this game. I might as well just throw some moves out there. But we're on move 16, and White has almost as much time as they started with, basically playing on the increment. I've also been moving pretty fast, but I have spent some time, and most importantly, my position is good. So... I can't stress that enough, guys. you got to manage your clock wisely. Okay, knight e2. So this prepares castling, I assume. Now I could take, and then go ahead and take here. Now, white will open up the attack on the pawn here, so maybe that's what white is thinking in this position. It's an interesting defense. So bishop takes f3, take, take here, take here. And I would normally just scoop f3, but we have to see that d5 is under attack at the end of that sequence. We're not simply going to take on f3 and then blindly take e5, blindly take f3. No, we got to be thinking ahead. So I'm currently thinking at the end of that sequence before 
uh, taking f3. So take f3 on with the bishop to start, then take e5. White takes back with their pawn, but do not play rook takes f3. I'm thinking on the third move, I play either e6 or bring a rook to d8. I like the look of both those moves. Probably leaning towards e6, just so I don't have to assign a high-value piece in the defense there. Queen c4 also looks decent. Oh, of course, I can also take the start. I need to look at that permutation of this too. How much does that change things? I mean, it might give me an extra option or two. White could take with the knight, but then they'd be dropping the g2 pawn at some stage. So, yeah, move order here could be a thing. Taking with the pawn or taking with the bishop first. I think I'm going to take with the pawn. Just because it gives white an extra chance to go wrong, I would welcome knight takes e5. Maybe white will see that I'm opening up my rook here. So let's try to see if white will capture here voluntarily. Um. I think taking with the pawn probably is the best move, but white may decide to take with the knight. Okay, so white's slowing down here. It did spend a significant amount of time on the previous move, but I like this decision. So if knight takes, I'll probably take with the knight to start, pawn takes, and then bishop takes g2, hit the rook, and the bishop will keep my pawn on d5 defended as well. So let's say rook g1, maybe bishop f3, something along those lines. And yeah, as I somewhat suspected, white did take with the knight. Is there any reason to take here? I could also try to take here first, but knight takes e5 just looks like by far the simplest move. thinking if I want to take with the bishop and then maybe try something fancy like d4. I do have some pressure down here too, but probably no immediate way to capitalize on that. Yeah, I think I'll take with the knight. Take this pawn here. So hit the rook and likely back the bishop up here. And I'm already in envisioning, let's say, rook g1, bishop f3. If white tries to escape the pin, maybe I hit them with Bishop h6. Attack the queen, which is in turn defending the knight. That's looking looking grim for white. All right, rook h2. A bit of an awkward square for that rook there, but it does hit my bishop and defends the pawn. That's probably why white played it. Wasn't really planning on taking that pawn, though, because of the queen takes d5 move. Although maybe that was playable, but... Okay, so rook h2 probably doesn't change much on my end. I think I'll still play bishop f3 here. Yeah, let's do it. See no reason not to. And annoying pin for white. And at this point, I'm up the uh, pawn. I still have the bishop pair. White still has the king issues, coordination issues. This should be a winning position for me. But let's let's stay alert. Let's stay vigilant, always. Queen d2. Mm -hmm. So here again, bishop h6 is a pretty appealing move. It activates the bishop, also prevents castling uh, on the queen side in the future. I think white will probably go queen c2 against this move. And I'm just thinking what my follow-up might be to that. I think white might try to plant their knight on d4 thereafter, so I can try to anticipate that. I could also trade down on e2. I am up a pawn, so you might be thinking, well, shouldn't you just trade, John? And you'd have a point. Trading is something I should consider here. But bishop h6, activating the bishop with tempo. I, I have a hard time resisting this move. Remember, d5 is defended, so we don't have an issue with that. I'm going to play it. Looks good. So attack that queen. And only two playable moves here, queen d1 or uh, queen c2, one of those two moves. Hard to believe white's going to step back into the pin, so I think they will play queen c2. 
A move I'm kind of playing around with my, in, in my head here with is on queen c2 playing d4, trying to open lines. There white goes. But I'm not quite seeing a good reason to do that. Like, it vaguely opens lines, but I don't think it's too convincing otherwise. Maybe bishop f4 here is a move I should consider. That's a creative way to, in a way, force white to play knight takes f4 because the rook doesn't have any squares. So if uh, bishop f4, knight takes f4, rook takes f4, I can, I can threaten rook e4 check. White still can't get their king out of the center. It is an opposite color bishop position, but I think this might be the way because I'm not seeing a defense for white at that point. Rook e4, force the king to d2. My queen is coming in, or rook to e2. Looks rough. So I, I spotted this idea. I'm just blunder checking it now, making sure I'm not leaving something hanging or allowing some counterplay. And I'm also trying to anticipate after this, how the game will go, how, how white can reasonably defend. And I'm not really seeing anything. Yeah, I like that a lot. Let's go for it. Otherwise, my bishop is nice, but I'd much rather trade this knight and get my rook in the attack. Because with the introduction of the rook into the play, we got to be darn near winning here. Bishop d2 attacking the rook runs into queen e2 mate because white would be screening their queen. Hard to see a plausible move. I mean, king d2, don't really buy it. Queen check, king, king back to c1. I can check and then pick up the rook in the corner at minimum. There's also moves like d4 if I want to do something like that. I do have to be aware if I ever play d4, there could be a check still but I think my king should be safe enough. But mostly I'm attacking here on the light squares. In an opposite color bishop position, if you guys want something you can take away from this game, in an opposite color bishop position, the side who's on the attack is almost always significantly better because the, um, the stronghold that they have on the color complex of the bishop that they own tends to create attacking chances. So what I would love if the queens were off the board here, then we could maybe speak about opposite color Bishop endings being drush. But with queens on the board and white's king remaining a question mark here, I think this is fatal. Yeah, white does try king d2 right away. So again, I can check, check, and then go take that rook. Just seeing if there's anything else that's appealing here. That looks pretty convincing. It's a force line. Just looking in the resulting position if white has any sort of play. This rook is still stuck too. That's the annoying thing for white. Yeah, I don't think there's much reason to get, get fancy here. So let's give the check. Only one move, king c1. And we'll check here. Not on e1. e1 runs into <laughs> bishop takes e1. So let's check here. Yeah, and my opponent resigns. Thanks to my opponent. So I do think white moved a little too quickly in the opening. Uh, this wasn't as egregious as some other examples we've seen recently, but I think this decision was a pretty big one. Bishop takes f5. White didn't sense the danger with their king in the center, I think until later. Uh, bishop d2 I didn't like. I felt like that was an awkward move. You know, arguably I could play bishop d3 here right away, by the way. Probably should have considered that move. Might be a little early to play it. There's moves like queen b3, attacking d5 and b7 in reply. But right around here, I think it's starting to get tough for white. And I think they have to think carefully about how they're going to defend. I would have played queen e3, but honestly, the position is just not that great here. This was a nice attempt at a defense. Knight d2 to b3 to c1. Probably white, white's last chance is to take with the pawn. And I'm pretty sure the engine's going to say I'm substantially better there. But I wasn't quite sure how to proceed after the capture. Because again, I do need to take, take care of the d5 square. So let's take a quick peek at the game review. I'm going to do an abbreviated analysis here. I do have to run. Okay, so pretty strong. 
percentages for me, 96.7% to 76.8. Yeah, so this is all theory out of the opening. I do like this hyper accelerated dragon, also the accelerated dragon, which is knight c6 and then g6. If you're looking for like a good starter Sicilian, I think there's a lot to be said about these lines. Um, from what I've seen at the amateur level, white often does not react well against this. One of the stronger lines against this is to actually go for the Maroxy bind. So like this, let's say, and then c4, intending knight c3. At the higher levels, they like to play this more often against these uh, accelerated and hyper-accelerated dragons. But at the lower levels, you don't see that as much. And although this is a legit line, if black knows how to respond, d5, looking to break up the pawns in the center, I think black gets pretty good play. So we can throw the opening book on here for a second. Yeah, we can see the... Breakdown, shrink my camera for a moment here. Yep, so e5, this was played. I went knight c6, looks like bishop g4 is played a little more often. I think both are, are valid moves. Yeah, and h3, interestingly, that's the top move in the database, but the auto analysis doesn't like it. And my bishop is being kettled into two connected pawns. That's not a, not a good long-term situation. But in the short term, I'm happy with getting the knight out because it could pivot to f5 and attack. And uh, I prepare castling. And I might look to activate the bishop by f6, challenging the center. Sorry, Ben Feingold, sometimes f6 is a good move. But um, yeah, suffice it to say, if you go for the setup as black, you want to have some ideas in mind about how to fight against this because it's a little bit quirky looking from the black side. So it looks like here we have a real deviation from the Masters database. Knight c3 and bishop b5 usually played. It's funny because bishop d3 looks pretty natural, but I can kind of see why that move isn't played so often. I think after this knight f5 reply, white does have issues on d4 pretty much straight away. I mean, you could move the bishop back maybe to try to defend, but then I pounce with queen b6. There's shades of the French defense going on here. Black gets a lot of play uh, right away against this pawn. So white took, what would be the best move according to the engine? Yeah, it does have bishop takes f5. If bishop c2, I was thinking maybe knight b4. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that's a little ticky tack. Bishop a4 check. Queen b6. Yep, queen b6. Hard to argue with that again. It's kind of the same thing. Bishop e3, we always have the option of taking. Yeah, I already don't really like it for white. Bishop b5, but then you've invested a couple tempi just to trade. Yeah, so white takes here. Bishop d2 gets the question mark. This is probably correct what the engine's saying. White should simply castle here. And I think we're looking at a middle game where, let's say I were to castle, it's probably going to gravitate towards the queen side temporarily. Let's say rook c8. Uh, I was thinking, yeah, bring, bring the rook over, knight here, knight here. Do have to respect queen b3 in some situations. But I'd look to do something like that knowing myself in the in the middle game here. Maybe look for f6. Computer seems to think I can play it right away here. Yeah, pretty safe bet that white should castle, especially given the problems that they had on the light squares coming up. But bishop d2, I go queen b6. Looks, looks decent here. They do wedge, wedge the bishop on c3. Again, I'd try to avoid that for the most part if I were, if I were you watching. It's just not a great long-term situation for the bishop being a big pawn in the chain. Yeah, maybe white can play knight c3 and try to sack a pawn, but the trend is already going against white. And then queen a6, I think this is a nice way to keep white's king in the middle. Just seeing if it proposes anything creative here. a4, looking for knight a3, knight b5, trying to break this, but that's a time-consuming operation. Seems like black is already doing well. Yep, so castles, and then queen e2, I think that also kind of walks into bishop d3, but it is hard to offer better advice here. I mean, this did amount to a waste of time. I, I would have tried queen e3 here at least, but I'm ready to blow things open. f6, let's see if takes, take with the pawn looks good. Yeah, you can see the evaluation here. That's pretty darn strong. I've got a rook coming over. White is caught on this column. Even if they castle this way, that's hardly the... Uh, 
end of their problems, right? Let's say I play something like this, and then queen takes a2, the engine's already finding force mate. So even on the queen side, they're going to run into to issues. So the queen went back to d1, and f6 is approved by the engine. Again, I give white credit, like finding this. b6 is a nice preventative move. I get the x-glam from the chess.com analysis. All right. Yep, bishop e4, keep the bishop. Remember, I'm not going here, here, because b3, a4, I didn't like white chasing my bishop. That would be awkward. This would actually be better for white, because my bishop is trapped. Mm -hmm. And this is already about a two-point advantage for, for black. It's suggesting e6, trying to jam things up. Probably white will lose that pawn, but that may, may be the lesser of the evils. Uh, 92, even though it gets the question mark, I, I kind of see the logic there trying to castle. Now I took, I was mentioning this move order. It actually took me a second to realize that this move order was also possible. And it does seem like d takes e5 is better. I was looking at a position like this where I need to just solve this, something like rook d8, or I think I was leaning towards e6. Um, f4, defending the pawn. This will take some work, though. You know, I'm going to start gradually pressuring the pawns. Better situation for black, but definitely some, some work there. But I think as played, this is already an overwhelming advantage. Maybe rook g1 a little bit better here. I would have played bishop f3. Yeah, this is already minus 7. Nice little sequence to end the game, and we'll just see if bishop f4 is approved by the engine. Yes, it is. So again, remember... Uh, if you're attacking, you may not mind going into an opposite color bishop position. That may actually en enhance your attack. It may be more obvious, like in this case, that I have pressure on the light squares that white is unable to deal with. Yeah, the best move here is rook h1, which would even give the rook for free. Uh, don't ask me why that's the best move, but <laughs> the threat is this, and then rook e2 or queen e2, and not much white can do about this. And had the game continued, I would have taken on a1, I bet. That's funny. Oh, okay, that's cool. Rook d4, cute move. And if bishop takes d4, the point is we've deflected the bishop. So the engine finds this line to force mate. Or if king e3, I guess this is something that may end in a mate as well. This looks unnecessarily complicated, though. So I probably would have just gone for the rook in the corner. Uh, but interesting that there's quicker mates there. Okay, so kind of an abbreviated analysis, but I do think uh, White's lack of uh, time usage at the beginning, and a couple superficial moves like bishop d3 looked natural, but it, it quickly gave up the bishop pair in the initiative. Bishop d2 with this bishop c3 thing, probably not the best. A couple quick superficial decisions with more time than White started with on the clock, and White was in hot water here. So make sure you use that time. Uh, decent player, though. I mean, clearly they knew what they were doing in the opening, but probably they need to consider their setup a little more closely if Black challenges that center. Okay, thanks for watching this Climbing the Rating Ladder video. Let me know if you have any comments. Uh, I'd be curious if you play this for either color. And thanks again for watching, guys. I'll be back again soon with another video.